Well, Stephen Fry is a man of many, many talents. We love this guy. Comedian, actor, writer, director. It is an incredible 40-year career. And for his latest project, he's once again put pen to paper, crafting a new book about his life and ties. That's right, ties. I spoke with him to hear how and why. Stephen, a great pleasure um, to talk with you. I've been a fan for many, many years. In fact, well, almost my whole life, <laughs> which I hope doesn't <laughs> make you feel old. No. <laughs> Other things make me feel old, Carl, I can assure you. <laughs> How have things been? Um, I mean, obviously, you've been still pretty productive uh, during COVID, um, but Fry's Ties is, is almost a book born out of the pandemic. Yes, it is. That's right. I mean, I did all the clichéic things like baking and also sort of tidying up corners of the house that hadn't been looked at for a long time. And that included some drawers, which I found were filled with ties. And I photographed one and posted it on Instagram with a little commentary on the name of the designer. And I hashtagged it Fry's Ties and then did the same the next day with a very different sort of tie and so on. And it built up really quite an extraordinarily rewarding kind of following. Oh, tally ho, yibbity dap and zing zang spill it. Looking forward to bullying off for the final chucker. I think you've written four memoirs now, haven't you? Or is this your this is your fourth? Most people are fortunate to do one bad memoir. And and you've got how many now? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Well, I think you're right. As uh, Lady Baracknell says, a life crowded with incident, I see. <laughs> and it is indeed. It seems most, uh, well, arrogant and vain to do it, but they are, they are from different periods and they're different stories mm. and parts of my life. And, and it has been a difficult... I mean, not many people in my business have, have been to prison when they were a teenager, and so there have been events, shall we say. Am I now mad? How have I got this illness? Could it have been prevented? Can I be cured of it? Since then, I've discovered just how serious it is to have bipolarity or manic depression. I think bipolar is finally getting the attention um, that, it, that it so deserves and the understanding, um, or at least partly thereof, um, that, that, that mm. it, it deserves. How have you wrestled with it? Uh, it? It's been difficult. The first and most important thing, of course, is to get that um, diagnosis. Uh, so many people are subject to mood swings um, and they just think that's normal and that's how you are. And, and if you're not diagnosed, the most natural thing is to reach out for something that will bring you down if you're too up alcohol bring you up if you're too down some form some form of drug that just perks you up and makes you just either numbs you or just stops you stops this weather inside you this mm. it's weather you can't seem to control through misfortune and all kinds of stupid mistakes i eventually did get that diagnosis and mm. so, so you mustn't underestimate its seriousness but on the other hand sort of counter to that you, you have to realize it is possible to live a totally fulfilled proper life of loving and being loved and achieving and, and so on, as so many great people have done in the past. This sketch that we're doing now is my absolute favourite one of all time. I just, <laughs> I just love this one. And what, watch what Stephen does in this, because it's fantastic. In the 80s, when, when, when you guys really took off with Hugh Laurie um, and, and the Black Adder days, this comedy um, you could put in a vault and, and open in 100 years and it's still going to be in, in, extraordinarily funny. It's sweet of you to say so. One obviously hopes that's true. A lot of things do date, but I, I'm always very touched when people who could be my grandchildren now <laughs> um, uh, get in touch via Twitter or whatever it might be yeah, with a question about something they've seen on YouTube from a sketch that you and I might have done, you know, 40 years ago. Wow. We were in extraordinarily lucky. I mean, all the more so now. And our yeah. generation, really, it, it almost seems like we sucked all the juice out of life's peach and are yeah. handing a dried-out husk to the next generation. <laughs> well, it is true. How many get cancelled these days? I mean, comedy now is just so fraught. It's a real tight rope. It was fraught in another way for yeah. us. I mean, you could still get cancelled. I mean, you know, one of my favourite old-fashioned comics of the 1930s was cancelled by the BBC for, I think, 20 years for telling a joke, which I can tell you now. He was, he was called Max Miller. He was known as the Cheeky Chappie. He said, I was going along this mountain pass, you know, um, and this girl's coming towards me. It's a very narrow pass. Uh, and he's live on BBC Radio in the 1930s, bear that in mind. And she's coming towards me and I can't go back and she can't go back and I can't go forward. I said to myself, Max, old son, what do you do? Do you toss yourself off or block her passage? <laughs> 
for that, he was cancelled. Now, we have different standards of cancellation. Now, I can tell that joke, I think, just yeah. about, and get away with it, <laughs> even in a morning in, in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> the early morning. I hope people haven't uh, exploded into their glass of Milo or whatever. <laughs> Come on, Stephen, you know Australians don't drink Milo. You're <laughs> dipping your lamby into your Milo. <laughs> Very good accent. <laughs> oh, thank you. The two Australian accents I fell in love with in Perth when I first arrived with Hugh and Emma Thompson in 1980 when we did a tour and one was for a telethon for 6ky yeah. and it was the, the kind of Australian who sounds as if he's got some form of acid reflux and he used to say ideal for gift giving interstate or overseas and he said <laughs> that overseas like that I said how are you permission to speak Absolutely, top holes are with a yin and a yang and a yippity doo. Do you miss working with him? Would you do something again with him? We talk about it a lot. Yeah. I see him all the time. It's weird how it just keeps passing by. I was going to be in something he filmed. He wrote and, and um, directed an adaptation of an Agatha Christie. Mm. Uh, we arranged that I was going to play a part in it with Emma Thompson, so it would be like old home week. Wow. And, and then yeah. I, got, I got this offer to do a series in Los Angeles that I just couldn't turn down, so I had to say, I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. My darling! My darling! My darling! <laughs> oh. Look at Emma Thompson. <laughs> wow, he's a terrific guy. Um, Stephen's book, Fry's Ties, is out on December 7th at all good bookstores. There's a, a lot of great stories in there about how he got his ties and the tremendous backstories. And I love that guy. And what a talent. He's a beautiful man, isn't he? And that was a really fun interview. Nice job. Thank you. Was that early? When did it you... was early. It was early in... Um... 2005. No, I met him in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it was early. It was so early. It was like 2.30 in the morning with the time difference. But, you know, uh, you'll do it to talk to those people. Yeah. I mean, what a talent he is. Incredible. Mm.